what's going on ladies and gentlemen welcome i am the crypto crow it is thursday and it's a day that i expect and i've been i know that the market is down and i know that everything is red but based off of my predictions and what i've been talking about now for the last several weeks i think today we could be in line for a reversal to the upside and we're going to talk about that i'm going to give you an intro and that's going to give you just enough time to click the link below and go join my crypto crow newsletter on substack we'll be right back and we're going to be talking about card Cardano's potentially upcoming ETF, Bitcoin's technical analysis, the Wyckoff reaccumulation pattern that it's in, and some other crypto news. So stick around. We'll be right back. If it's below bear, I don't care. It's quite a rough ride, just like life. But I'm kind of patient, cause only time will tell. It's gonna go so you better stay calm. Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking about Cardano's price. We're not going to be showing Cardano charts necessarily because I don't think they're very relevant in what I'm going to go over today. But uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things in the crypto news space some Cardano news, the Card Cardano ETF that apparently Charles Hoskinson wants. So we're going to look at that um, and also know that moving forward, I'm going to start doing some more deep dives into Cardano native assets. This is going to be a big deal because I'm going to start investing more into them. I, I have so much Cardano at this point that I've been accumulating now for years. And um, I mean, I if you remember, if you follow me, I've been buying Cardano since 50 cents after the, the, the dump of the last market cycle. I sold um, and then I started accumulating at 50 cents because I was just, I felt naked. I felt naked and afraid without my ADA bags. And so I've been accumulating and, and I'm at a point now where I'm starting to get into other native assets and I'm gonna start doing a lot of research on a lot of Cardano native assets. And I'm gonna start sharing with you what I like and what I don't like. And I'm gonna, anything I don't share on YouTube, I'm gonna be sharing in my sub stack. So make sure you sign up and, and, and you start referencing that and checking it out. Out, you will get an email every time I put out a big update and there will be many as I move forward in my research. I've also got another thing working on a lot of stuff related to crow score uh and and i'm making some changes and how that's going to start coming about and it, it's like it's time to get this thing moving i know a lot of you have been messaging me about it and so forth and i think i'm going to have to go a little bit of a different way with it because i think ultimately the way that you it, 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 there's just a lot of confusion related to how that's supposed to come about and so i've got some guys that i'm, I'm going to be working with on it i i need to get that out i want to start getting some crow scores out and i want to start getting um risk risk wise pro uh filled out with a lot of crow scores and things so that's all coming there'll be updates on that wargram I'm telling you, this game is going to be fire. It's absolutely going to be fire. Eli Scandador, who's been my partner on Wargram now for a while, well, really since the beginning, um, has been managing it and, and basically being the big architect behind all of it, dealing with the programmers and, and making sure that everything's built. Of course, I've done all the art for it. And, and it's just, I've played a couple full games all the way through to the end. And like it's a fully working MVP, folks, the first thing um, ever. And I, and I definitely have Eli to thank for that. And so, you know, he's out of Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin conference this weekend. And uh, I think we're working on a little bit more uh, capital to really bring the game home, hopefully prior to August, but we'll see. I mean, it's to a point now where we could launch it, but it won't be the best experience. Like I want more animations. I want a little more flash and trash in the game um, to make it a little more entertaining rather than just competitive but we've got deck building in we've got the full mechanics in, we've got everything in and it's it's pretty slick i i have to say and everybody that's been touching it lately has been like this is going to be fire and and i don't think there's i don't think any blockchain based tcg game has as complex a system for mechanics and gameplay as wargram does a lot of it is kind of cheesy like um, I don't know. It, it's just different. You'll see when you play it for the first time, you'll be, I think you're going to be very, very pleasantly surprised. No, you can't buy anything yet because I want to, when I, when we launch the boosters and we launch everything, I want it to be at a point where if you played it with those NFT cards, you're going to be like, I'm so glad I got these. I need to get more. I want it to be like an addiction for you. I'm not going to lie <laughs> because I know it's going to be for me. So anyway, we, what we're looking at right now, 
is what I've been referencing since all the way back in July 5th, Friday of July 5th, where I basically talked about how I expected this to be the spring for a Wyckoff reaccumulation pattern. And this has been since confirmed. And you can see in this green line here, this is what this is the price projection I drew out on the 5th. And it has been playing out to the T, okay? This here is what I expect to be the final pullback prior to a new run up into around $75,000 range. Now, we have this dip here and that's and this is these are two day candles, okay? Just so you know. So if you want to map this all out on your own or if you're a member of my Substack, I've got screenshots that I showed, you know, my original mapping of this on July 5th, but you can see we came all the way down here to 63 around the 634 range and we're starting to pull back and we're starting to get our initial reversal. That will tell me if this confirms and we turn blue in the next candle on this two day chart, we're going to be well on our way. And there's a lot in, there's a lot going on in the crypto space. Obviously, we have the Bitcoin convention that's happening this weekend. Everybody's expecting Donald Trump to speak about how, you know, potentially, I don't know what's true or not. But apparently he's going to be speaking on whether or not he is going to be making Bitcoin some form of strategic reserve for the U.S. government, which will be absolutely nuts. And, and you know, if we're looking at a one hour, you can see we're starting to get a reversal. We came all the way down and on these hourly candles, we're starting to get a reversal, which is basically confirmation that this is likely very accurate once again. Uh, you know, I, I expect to see this go really well. And then if we look up here, if we look to this point of like between the 70,000 or 69.7 through the 70, let's just call it 72,000. Once we hit this point, we're going to chew this, the, 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 um, Basically, we're gonna chew the bears up and we should spit right through this all the way up into $74,000. And then from there, well, lo and behold, it looks like I would suggest by the end of August, I wanna see an $80,000 new all-time high for Bitcoin. And in that, I expect to see Cardano rise up as well. Because once, the thing of it is, is that Cardano has been slow and I feel like we've been in this accumulation period with Cardano for a while now. A lot of people are like, oh, Cardano's dead and slowing down and this and that. And it's like, no, this is an accumulation pattern that we've seen so many times over the last several markets, right? Since 2017, you know, when that market came down, Cardano would accumulate and then it started ripping into the, the, the market post having, um, even though just prior to the last having into the 2021 peak, the price action is almost identical. The difference is, is that now instead of starting at two cents, it started at around 22 cents. Interesting, right? And it went from two cents all the way up to $3 and 14 cents. And that was before Cardano was even finished. It basically had really not that much going for it at the time other than a hope, a prayer and a dream. And now we're finally concluding that with the Chang hard fork that's coming. Now, getting to the Chang hard fork, I wanna show you guys this. I was looking at this and I, I check every day and I'm like, what the hell happened? All of these nodes were, were upgrading to 9.00. And I'm like, why did it drop off? Cause I know yesterday I looked at the Cardano nodes and there were, it was over 30%. I'm like, we were climbing, what's going on? Well, that's because uh, there's 9.1. Point zero out. So if you're looking at these numbers, you got to go back and you got to look 9% of these nodes. So now we are basically above, we're getting close to 35% now. We need 70% to conclude um, their upgrades to take us into the Ch Chang hard fork. Now, a possible bearish trend of support levels fail to hold is suggested by the failure to break above the 200 EMA for Cardano, which is a cause for concern. On-chain metrics, however, offer a more sophisticated perspective. A total of 69% of addresses with ADA are out of the money or unprofitable according to data. Yes, that's true. The Im imbalance suggests that many traders may be considering selling their positions should, should the price fail to rise, which could result in a wave of liquidations. Additionally, over the last five weeks, ADA funding rates on Binance have been continuously negative. As liquidations take place, assets that have sustained negative funding rates historically experience short squeezes. If short positions are compelled to cover it, this could result in a quick and dramatic price increase 
for Cardano. This is what I'm talking about. If this plays out with Bitcoin's price, it's likely when, when we saw Bitcoin suddenly rise up to a new all-time high before the halving, you'll notice Cardano was basically in that same accumulation cycle, basically doing a lot of the same things that's happening right now. And it shot all the way up to like 83 cents very, very quickly. And then when Bitcoin basically peaked out at that local high in the new all-time high prior to the halving, Cardano started to drop with it and then bled a little bit more into Bitcoin. But we had the reversal when Bitcoin pumped. People were taking those profits and dumping them into Cardano. And that is basically the game. That's ultimately what happens. Bitcoin's price spikes up. Some of those profits go into the altcoin market and start pumping up everybody's favorite tokens. And I think ultimately what's happening is we're going to see a pretty dramatic pump, not just in Cardano, but in Bitcoin and other assets because number one with cardano the chang hard fork is coming it's probably going to be sometime within the next two or three weeks depending on how many people upgrade how many of these uh, exchanges basically get upgraded themselves and everybody's ready that kicks off i think the decentralization of cardano to that degree i don't think there's anything else other than bitcoin that's ever done anything like that correct me if i'm wrong but on top of that the on-chain democracy that's coming to Cardano is gonna be a major, major ground changer for everything. And I think when we're starting to talk about technology such as real world assets, artificial intelligence, and just the remittance and everything else, we're gonna to wanna to operate on a truly decentralized chain. And I think that once the Chang hard fork is concluded, I think at that point is that's when we're going to start seeing some really significant growth in Cardano, both on chain and off. It's one of the reasons why it's I feel like it's time I'm going to really start diving into native assets. I want to see what has been sifted through the sifter, right? If we're all gold hunting and we're just screening out all the dirt trying to look for gold nuggets, now's a good time to start seeing which ones are actually shiny compared to which ones just sound like a good idea. And then I'm gonna FOMO in and like throw a bunch of little money at everything and hope something sticks. I think now's gonna be a really good time to start diving into that. So you can expect to see that very soon. OKX to delist these trading pairs. Now I haven't seen many people talk about this, which is I'm surprised especially the ADA haters, but I'm thinking that might be because they read into the article and they understand actually what's going on. So it's kind of a moot point for trying to build FUD. OKX announced in a blog post that it will delist spot trading pairs for ADA, ETH, XRP, ETH, SHIB, and BTC, ADA, BTC, and XRP, BTC, among others. Other crypto tokens like Litecoin, Polygon, Matic, Chainlink, Dogecoin, and Polkadot were also caught in the mix, with OKX also revealing plans to delist some spot trading pairs related to these tokens. Basically what it boils down to, so the crypto explained that this move formed part of their regular monitoring and review of all listed trading pairs to maintain a robust spot trading environment. Basically what it boils down to is people aren't trading, they're, they're not trading into these base pairs. Data holders are holding. People are buying and they're accumulating and they're holding. They're not basically trading back and forth between ADA and Bitcoin or Cardano and Ethereum. People are holding their Cardano, expecting significant price momentum as we continue to move further into the market. And if you look back in the 2021 cycle, you can see that as we got closer to the parabolic run, Cardano went and basically 4X Ethereum in terms of value. It went up over 400% against Ethereum's price, okay? So we have all this accumulation, we have all these ups and downs and ebbs and flows, but ultimately once things really start kicking into high gear, Cardano typically really grows much faster than uh, uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, et cetera. And we're at a point in the market now where people are basically going out of, you know, a lot of people have been accumulating basically. So um, I don't know if this is necessarily good news or bad news other than like, it just goes to show that people are holding the XRP army. I mean, the, their narrative is, you know, XRP is going to the moon. And once we get through all these court cases and all this other stuff that it's gonna go crazy. Well, 
a lot of newcomers to the crypto space are buying into these narratives related to, to, to XRP and Ripple and all of that. Even somebody I know personally was like, hey, I'm gonna get my Cardano, but I think I'm also gonna get some XRP. That seems like that's gonna do really well too. So people are seeing these news articles and they're seeing a lot of this FOMO and hype around some of this stuff and they're, and they're buying into it. And so there's gonna be some XRP movement too. And I think that um, everything that's going on politically right now is ultimately going to help everything in the crypto space but as well xrp and others in the market so we're going to see what happens there um this is what happened cardano node 9.1.0 includes all the features required to cross the upcoming chang hard fork the main change from node 9.0.0 is that node 9.1 requires a Conway Genesis file at startup, whereas the Genesis file was optional in node 9.0.0. This file is needed to cross the Chang hard fork. So everybody's gonna need to get to 9.1 is basically what it boils down to. And when I saw those numbers drop earlier, I was like, what the heck is going on? Cardano node 9.1 release also incorporates some bug fixes and enhancements to the CLI and API including a query treasury command and changes to ensure compatibility with CIP 69 and CIP 119. Now, make sure you go get your Cardano shirts. I know that of all the shirts that I've got available so far, I've been make I've made every one of these and I really do love every one of them, but I really like my uh, true democracy starts with Cardano. I really like that one. And of course I love my let's Chang the world. I, this the let's Chang the world is, is the, the top selling shirt so far of all my Cardano merch. So thank you guys for supporting me and my merch and, and supporting Cardano because why wouldn't you now? There's something else that I wanted to address, and that is the uh, ETF. Cardano in the spotlight as ADA Cardano ETF buzz heats up. Now, I know that there's been a big question about like a Solana ETF and whether or not that's coming. It may very well, but a lot of what I've been seeing from insiders and a lot of people in the market is that, that they don't want an ETF for, for Solana, that they don't wanna get involved with one. Honestly, I think I understand why. I will be surprised if there is a Solana spot ETF, but I also believe that some of that is gonna be relevant to uh, the regulatory climate moving forward. And I think that what happens with the new presidential election is going to ultimately dictate some of what happens with some of these ETFs. Now. This is, and this is, and I'm not being, I'm not being catty. I'm really not being catty. But if I'm looking at this, let's just say that there was a, a, a thing between Cardano and Solana, okay? What is one, what is one function or what is one thing that BlackRock loves control. I mean, let's be real. BlackRock loves control. They love to control the market. They love to project what's happening in the market and they like to bring that to fruition and profit from it. Let's just be real, that's what they do. Not only is that not what they do, they also have systems in place to kind of help facilitate a lot of that. Aladdin can help dictate, predict markets, move the markets. I mean, let's just be real. Companies pay them millions of dollars for access to the, to the technology and what they have. Now, if I'm wanting to try and better control the crypto market, what would make more sense for me as a, as a, you know, like an ETF fund operator or whatever, I don't even know what you call these guys, right? A company like BlackRock, they wanna launch an ETF. You launch an ETF with an already very centrally controlled asset like Solana, that's basically primarily in the hands of its founders, its team, its venture capitalists, its inside investors and all of that that are notoriously and very easily um, moving the market, you know, moving numbers, doing a lot of things to keep it kind of where it's going and what it's doing until they can't anymore for whatever reason? Or do you try to establish this, an element of control over a truly decentralized blockchain? Now, the pros and cons of this are, are that for Cardano, I want to see Cardano not be controlled by centralized effort, the centralized interests. But it looks like Charles is saying, you know, let's go for it. I mean, and so I'm, I'm kind of one of these days. I'm going to talk to him about it. Maybe I'll talk to him more about this in at Rare Eva. We'll see. Speculation grows around Ada Spot ETF after Ethereum's launch, with Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson expressing interest. Potential centralization risks associated with Ada ETF are raised by some. Community 
community members. Well, yeah, like me. Cardano ecosystem shows positive momentum with upcoming hard fork and growing TVL, setting the stage for significant growth. As the spot crypto ETF race intensifies, there are growing speculations of more crypto ETFs. After Ethereum's spot ETF recently started to trade, the focus has now shifted to ADA. The Cardano founder recently responded to a question from Tap Tools on the X platform. It questioned whether the ADA ETF is next, to which Hoskinson replied with a playful gif that read, fine, I'll do it myself. And I'm not sure I understand what he means by that. Um, community in a frenzy. Hoskinson's lighthearted reply has led to a flurry of discussion in the Cardano community. One men member, intrigued by Hoskinson's response, asked if he could also secure a stable coin for Cardano and a partner with an exchange to, to list Cardano native tokens. Hoskinson supported this idea. I've got news for you folks. I've been talking and hinting about this um, for a while. I know there's an exchange coming. I don't think anybody else knows this. I met with someone um, not that long ago, had lunch with someone um, that is a, uh, I, I guess you could say a higher up at a major leverage trading platform and they are launching a new spot trading exchange and they want to be the only one out there that's listing all of the cardano native assets this is a centralized spot exchange i've been talking to them back and forth about this now for months i just got an update today i can't share it yet though um but I'll, I, I might, let me see, what can I share in some of this? Everything's at the processing right now. We plan to launch new exchange in the next week. App listed in all of mobile device stores from the 15th of August to the 1st of September. When blank enters the public, it has something better than the current exchange. Um, spot trading, we will have 80 to 100 spot trading pairs at the start of spot trading fee will be 0%, which is friendly to your users. Future trading, um, there will be no KYC and VPN for all regions users includes US and Canada. This means the Northern American folks could, could escape. That's all I can say right now. Um, because I want, I want this, I don't want to. I wanna make sure that, like, let's put it this way. I know that their leverage trading is very large and does very well. And I, I just so that you understand the nature of this relationship, gosh, that, I don't, I don't wanna give that away either. Let's just say that there's an exchange coming. And the and the plan is, is that they not only wanna list a lot of the major native assets on Cardano, but they want my involvement and they want me to help spread the word to all of you because they know that my community is primarily all Cardano. And they know that that's a market because I've, tell, I've told them from early on, I'm like, listen, and we need a spot exchange that lists these native assets so that it's not just a bunch of stuff on on dexes and so they went back and forth back and forth back and forth and then finally i met with them in person and we talked about it and they're like we're gonna do it so i'm excited about it i can't say anything yet but you'll find out right here so if you want to know um make sure you subscribe and i'll of course keep you abreast and of course i'll be posting some details in my sub stack i will let you guys know so the same community member suggested partnerships with USDC or USDT and major exchanges like Coinbase or Binance. While the idea is well received, some community members are concerned that an ETF could centralize Cardano, potentially threatening its decentralized journey. So um, further, Gar Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple Labs, has expressed confidence in the SEC's potential approval of spot ETFs for Cardano, along with Solana and XRP. Garlinghouse suggested that more crypto ETFs might launch following Ethereum and Bitcoin <clears throat> ETFs. The Bloomberg ETF analyst, Eric Balchunas, had also predicted the same. Listen, it looks like, I mean, this is going to continue heating up. It's obvious. If there's any, if there's any crypto asset out there that the institutions and the whales and all of these guys would love to be able to at least 
establish some some element of control it's going to be cardano and so it makes more sense honestly that cardano would be the next etf in the altcoin market way above solana not because solana's number doesn't go up it does okay listen i'm going to be real honest with you guys i do not like solana but i still use it in bot trading and other things because if i'm trying to accumulate more bitcoin in automated trading solana's number does go up and and then when it drops it, it gives me an opportunity gets it back into bitcoin and it's just an easy bot trading pair i'm just i'm not gonna lie about it it is what it is i just don't really like the nature of solana much its history is just so shady but it, I mean, in the world of finance, what isn't shady, right? I mean, let's just be real about it. But anyway, when I'm looking at, uh, if I'm looking at the, the details, it's like, it makes a lot more sense because then these institutions that are running these spot ETFs on Cardano will have voting rights like everyone else. And these voting rights are gonna be relevant to the amount of ADA they're holding. If they've got 1% of like, you know, all of these funds and retirement accounts and everything else, people say, I just want to get into, I want to get into Bitcoin. I want some Ethereum. I want some Cardano. You know, they don't even necessarily need to know what the hell they're talking about other than like, it's one of the top crypto assets in the market, right? And so these spot ETFs are gonna go out and they're gonna buy it on the spot exchanges. They're gonna take more off of the market. I'm sure they're gonna run their own delegation nodes, okay? So now they're making fees off of Cardano. Um, they're gonna be watching the price go up. They're gonna be making fees off of all of the voting that they do. Then they're gonna be making fees off of their own delegation nodes. And they're just, they're gonna be making so much money off of Cardano ETFs and and have voting rights to different things that come into play. It's not, not to mention the one and a half billion ADA treasury that's about to get unlocked. So the more I think about it, the more I'm like, it's kind of a no brainer, but I, and, and it's like, yeah, will it help the price? Maybe, I mean, I would think it will because however many people start accumulating Cardano through their ETF, through these ETFs, their retirement accounts, their investment funds, whatever their IRAs, et cetera. I mean, it's just taking more off of the circulating market supply. So it's gonna be easier to move the price. And when there are big bullish uh, things that happen on Cardano, which are pretty regular for the most part, those are going to affect the Cardano price that much more. So we'll have to see, but ultimately um, that's it for today. I'm gonna get back to work. I'm gonna go doing, uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot of different things in uh, my research for a lot of what's going on, my other project, there's so much stuff happening. So um, make sure you join my sub stack, link is in below. And uh, yeah, pick up a Cardano shirt if you don't mind. Until next time, guys and gals, crow your coins. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon. And don't forget about Karate Combat this weekend. It's gonna be a really big deal. Oh, you know what? One other thing. I, I got a note. One of these bad boys just minted a block on Bitcoin. Can you believe this? I, I don't have all the details. They sent me the block. They sent me the names of everything. They showed me the proof. Um, and uh, they sent me one of these. I've had one running in a bathroom for a while, but, uh, and they're not promoting, they're, they're not paying me to say this or, or talk about it. I just, I do have one and they, 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 they're always trying to get me to talk about them. But I thought this was actually pretty interesting. It was part of a pool, but it was, I think it was a pool of other bit acts um miners. Now these are just little conversation pieces. Like these are not really meant they could anything's possible but they're on sale 160 bucks and you know they just minted a block with these bad boys so absolutely anything is possible and uh yeah i don't know that's pretty daggone cool if you ask me but if you're curious about that just go check it out bitcoinmerch.com and uh you pick you can pick one of these up they're very, they are really cool little devices i will say that they're very cool little devices and uh so yeah i'll leave you with that but until next time crow your coins thanks for joining me and i'll see you again soon